Hello, and welcome to Portsmouth This Week. I'm your host, Conley Zani. This show is under the auspices of Rich Rayner, our Portsmouth Town Administrator. Together, Rich, myself, and the entire Portsmouth This Week team are on a mission to build community. We do that by bringing you accurate and timely information about the events and activities that impact you. We introduce you to the faces, the personalities, the leaders in this magical place that we live. I am so honored today to have as a guest, Joe Forgione. Welcome, Joe. Nice. Joe is the chair of the Portsmouth Economic Development Committee. That is a mouthful, right? right? Yeah, and absolutely. I know you do a ton of things. Yeah. So welcome to the show, well, Joe. Thank you, Conrad. Have you ever been on the show before? No, I haven't. Well, then far past due. I'm glad to, to, to have you. Yeah, and hear a little bit about this committee. When I first heard we were going to interview you, I was like, I know they do really important yeah. things, but but what, right? I'm sure totally. a number of our viewers out there are thinking the same thing. So, so let's start, before we get into what you do, tell us about you and why you're doing this. Okay, let's yeah. go. Yeah. So, uh, so I've been in Portsmouth, I guess, indirectly for uh, about uh, 13 years. We had a vacation okay. home here for a number of years. And where are you, where are you from, from? Massachusetts. Okay. I was, I was born in Cambridge. All grew right. up in Massachusetts, went to school in, in Cambridge. Yeah. And vacation uh, down here. And vacation down here for the last uh, dozen or so years. That's and, so cool. Um, and, <laughs> and literally, uh, my wife, Anne, and I fell in love with it. Um, we, it's we, kind we, of a hidden gem. It, it was a hidden gem. You yeah. know, we started by uh, going to the farm coast and going to the vineyards um, yeah. on vacation even before that. And we realized that it was a hidden secret it was a very special place um, yeah. and uh, we started looking for a vacation home. We found a place and then came here over a number of years and then eventually thought that uh, we would want to make it um, our permanent home. Yeah. Even before I was uh, executive CEO of a technology company based out of uh, New York. And so during a period of time, um, we rebuilt to, to make it into our permanent home. Right, so you turned that vacation, and you kept it, but just... Turned it into a, a permanent home. Yeah. Eventually sold um, our house in uh, Massachusetts and moved down here uh, to, in 2018, so about six years ago. Well, that's kind uh, of Just exciting. about six years ago, I think, this month. Did that mark uh, a semi-retirement for you, or no, you still uh, have your hands I, I, in that I, technology? I, I was still working. I, yeah. reti I retired uh, officially in 2023, okay. uh, semi-retired, because I still <laughs> They're probably all get, get still involved like, okay. in various <laughs> aspects, um, yeah. still interested in mentoring and and board work, but it's a different life. And yeah. and so um, when I came here, um, I you know I thought that there was a lot more that uh, we could get involved in, uh, yeah. given given my background and given my understanding of, of business yeah, and, and, your skill and, sets. and my skill sets. Yeah. And and so somebody introduced. I can't remember exactly how introduced me to um, I'll call it the PEDC because say Portsmouth oh, well, thank you. Let, let's go with we'll that. We'll have to increase the time of this program by an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so it, P, it, PEDC um, would be a good role. And so I joined uh, probably in 2021, okay. uh, 2020. It was right around the time uh, with COVID. I remember the first few meetings we did, we had to do it remotely through Zoom. Oh, sure, with a, right? you know, the town hall was shut down. That's an interesting and introduction, I'm sure. It, yeah, it, it, it was. Um, and I got to, you know, know uh, the members and the issues. And then so this, this you know, past year, um, they, uh, in January, they voted me in as, as the chair yeah. for this, you know, each year we decide uh, to vote a new uh, leadership. And so I became uh, the chair of the group in nice. uh, January. Um, and my, you know, my platform was, you know, to build upon the successes of the past. Um, and some of those were, you know, bringing in some new people and tackling some new, um, new challenges. Yeah, like building this committee, you mean? Yeah. You build, yeah. So yeah. first thing, it, when I was a CEO, first thing you ever do is you look at, you know, who do you have and then how do you, how do you, build, how do you build and complement the team by, you know, adding more and you know maybe subtracting although in this case since it's appointed by the town council I don't get involved in right. selecting uh, who goes on it but in terms of you know leadership I always said you that could say, this the, is the, what we need the, yeah the, f the first job of leadership I've always said is making sure you have the right person for the right job at the right time and so what I focus <laughs> I like that, a lot yes. on is you know making sure when we get a committee assignment that we put the right people 
on that assignment. Yeah, it sounds and like you've got a good bench on this committee too. We have a great, yeah, we have, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a perfect blend of type of people you would want on uh, in business. You know, we have, we have a lawyer, we have a financial advisor, uh, we have an architect, um, we have some, re uh, you know, retired people that were in the technology area. We have a, you know, good balance of people that can tackle some of the problems that I'll talk about in a few yeah. minutes. And um, the first thing that we decided to do is let's focus on defining our mission and rewriting it to make sure. I love that. I was that, just about to say, what is the mission yeah, of this committee? So, so you know, we, we wanted to make sure that we were focused on uh, the challenges and the problems that were appropriate for our committee, given our skill set and given the charter that the town council has given us. And it's, it's essentially to, to, to make sure that we attract and retain the right types of businesses um, in Portsmouth, uh, in the community, and you know, give them what they need uh, to be successful. And yeah. and so, you know, there's a lot of words in there. I think one of the words we put in there was community-friendly, forward-thinking uh, types of businesses. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah. Like, what is the right type of business? And maybe you can explain that by saying what the yeah. wrong type is. I don't yeah. know. Like, how do you, how do you describe no, it's that? Very, yeah, it's a good, it's just a good yeah. question. It's kind of a loaded word, but, <laughs> but is, we right? want we, we debated it extensively. We wanted to put it in there when we said community-friendly types of businesses because we wanted to make sure that they were the types of businesses that people who chose Portsmouth as a community to live in would like to have. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I could, like you said, if I said we're going to bring in a new scrapyard, and I know there's a history, somebody mentioned to me there was a history of a scrapyard somewhere in Portsmouth many, okay. many years, many decades ago. That's probably not a business that we, <laughs> we want to attract um, sure, uh, to, sure. to Portsmouth. But, but it, a community-friendly business could be anything from, you know, retail shop. Uh, My Pilates to, to it, it could be a studio. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It, it could be, you know, it could, it could be, uh, you know, a coffee shop. Um, um, it could be, uh, you know, a business like um, Ocean State Air, which is, you right. know, uh, you know, it's a high technology HVAC and, 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 and those types of businesses uh, would be very nice. And kind of the step back a little bit, um, you know, why, why is it important to have community friendly businesses in Portsmouth? Because somebody could say, well, you know, we want, you know, we want to be a, a, you know, total bedroom community, well, you know, right. and, and, and I've said in the past, you know, we like Little Compton and we like Middletown. Portsmouth, by design, is somewhat in between the extremes oh, of that's a nice way to think Little about it, Compton right? and, 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 and Middletown. You know, Little Compton, um, you know, it's very rural and it's beautiful, the farm coast. Uh, and, you know, Middletown is you know, a lot of shopping. Again, both great communities we want around us. But Portsmouth probably is, is, is situated in, as wanting a little bit of both to kind of yeah. be in the middle and in between that. And so we, when we think about, you know, what kind of businesses do we want, we want to have the conveniences. Um, so when you're a robust uh, community, you want businesses because you want to have the conveniences of grocery stores and coffee shops and restaurants and, you know, uh, plumbers. <laughs> you yeah. know, you want to have those type of uh, businesses so that you can get people when you need yeah. them. And um, you also, from an economic standpoint in a community, you want business because they add to the tax base. And when you have communities that have uh, few or no businesses have much higher residential tax rates. So you want to have some businesses, yeah, maybe not too take much. Take the edge off. So it's, so, so, so it's both economic um, and it's, it's also the convenience of what type of community you want to be. And I think, that, that, you know, there's actually a third one, which I have in the back of my mind. I, w I went to a Newport uh, business development seminar uh, last week and somebody threw out a statistic which I hadn't heard about, which is 50% of the people who live on Quidnick Island work off the island which oh. I thought was really interesting. I'm trying to get the detailed data behind it to analyze it a little bit further. Because that's an interesting thing, because that would say, okay, why you know, don't we have more businesses? Because I think a perfect community would be people work and live in, in, their, community. in their community. I think it probably has to do, you know, this is my only speculation, is you know, since, since we're relatively um, expensive from a housing standpoint, um, people have to have High-paying jobs elsewhere, maybe in Massachusetts, maybe in Providence, if they're yeah. if they're in healthcare or financial services or whatever. So, 
Um, you know, ideally, I think it would be great if maybe we had a larger percentage of people that lived here and also worked here. Yeah. And, so. and I think the flip side is also interesting. I don't know if they talked about this at this yeah. um, seminar, but how many people are coming in from the outside? Like, it, what is the it, nature of the jobs? You know, it, it, are, and I, I didn't give the second. That's a really good question. I didn't give the second part of that because the second part is the inverse. They stated right. that fifty percent of the people that work here live off the island, so it's an inverse. Fifty yeah. percent of the people live here work elsewhere. Fifty percent of the people that work here right. live off the island. And again, without looking at the data, my speculation is, and this <clears throat> included Newport, so this is all of uh, sure. So my speculation is, you have a lot of services-oriented industry uh, and tourism in uh, Newport, and so a lot of those people probably, you know, given the numbers of people, come down from other communities like you know Providence and other parts of Rhode Island. Yeah. So. So anyway, the, the, you know, the interesting challenge um, in, um, so that's our mission and, you know, basically making sure that we have, um, the businesses have a forum, a group that they can go to. We work, we work directly for the town council. So when we come up with something and we analyze it, we typically bring it to the town council along with working with Richard Neer as the town administrator and coming up with a recommendation, you know, so for example, right. um, signage is something that they came to a us. hot button these days <laughs> they, yeah they, they came to us uh, the ports uh, business association came to us and said you know as our advocate could you take a look at the signage ordinances and so we compared it to other communities and we're in the process of investigating and seeing how we could potentially modify that um, again that would be the purview of this of the planning board and the zoning board, but we can make a recommendation on behalf of businesses. Sure. And um, again, we, 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 if we want to tweak it, we want to tweak it in a way that it still preserves the, the you know, the, the uh, community. We don't want to have uh, billboard signs. We don't want to have you know, neon signs or some of the signs that they have down in Middletown uh, yeah. at the shopping malls and all that, but we could tweak it a little bit to make it better. Of course. Yeah. Do you find, I mean, I'm sure there's some interesting drama around some choices, right? Do you yeah. find, are people calling you and being like, Joe, I want to give you my opinion? <laughs> no. <laughs> or, I, or how do they get in touch with you and the yeah, committee? It's, and... It, it, it's sort of, you know, idiosyncratic. It, 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 it happens occasionally, but it probably doesn't doesn't happen in enough in a systematic way. Um, I know at the end they'll, they'll um, give my email. Uh, so anybody looking at the show, if um, you do have any recommendations or suggestions, feel free to uh, send, send me an email and you yeah. know, we certainly will uh, It's just we'll great take a that look you're here it. to tell people about yeah. what you do. I think that a lot of people don't even know this committee really is a is making the recommendations yeah. that you are and, and sort of setting a vision and mm -hmm. it, it's wonderful. Yeah, and it's not just the businesses we, that we re represent, we, we have it. We, we represent the people and the businesses, and I intentionally put people and businesses, I put people yeah. first. Because ultimately, um, you know, it's the voter, it's the, the, the people, the residents, the citizens of the town that um, should be, should feel that they have, you know, a right and a responsibility to have this to be the type of community they want it to be. Yeah. So if they have recommendations on on types of businesses if they have recommendations on regulations if they have you know recommendations on anything uh, related to the economic or business climate of the town please bring it to our attention and uh, we'll take yeah. a look at it. I know in the past historically they've done some of those um, surveys you know you have those online surveys like yeah, boomerang yeah. and all that and unfortunately <laughs> you're chuckling are you hearing well, interesting say, things <laughs> well you know unfortunately I, I know from my history in the business world that uh, it's very hard to get people to respond to surveys you know typically when you do a major survey you, you get two percent or less yeah. response and you rate. get some angry people and, and, and that are like, you do you yeah. get you get the outliers so if you do with you know a thousand people you get you know two or three <laughs> you know uh, messages and so it's hard to statistically determine whether or not that has any meaning behind it. Of course, um, so yeah. I'd rather hear from people anecdotally yeah. and then I can ask questions and follow up and say you know what were you thinking and so on and so forth. Yeah. That's cool. Well let's talk about some of the cool initiatives that that you guys are working on. I know um, there are several. Yeah. There, where do you want to start? <laughs> well uh, you, know, you know there 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 are several and there are a few that are bubbling up um, which we're taking a look at and investigating and may do more. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, we did, you know, in the past, because the town owns uh, a lot of property. Again, one of, the, one of the 
treasures of this town is the properties that we own, you know, whether it be Glen Park, Glen Manor House, which yeah. um, is an incredible, it's a world-class venue. Um, and the Newport Polo uh, land uh, is yeah. owned by the town. And so um, typically those are leased um, to uh, independent business people to, in order to use and, gen and help generate uh, money for the town. And so the Newport uh, Polo lease, which was coming up for renewal, uh, we took at, we took a look at it and there was a contract in place for about 10 years. And it wasn't working either for the town um, or for the, the, the you know the, the owner, the president of Newport Polo, uh, because he, you know, he got caught up in COVID where he was basically shut down yeah. and still had to pay rent. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you it's know, really hard. And so we, you know, we sat with him and he realized that he had somebody or people that ran business before and could understand what he was dealing with. And we restructured restru um, a contract um, that the town gets a share of tickets sales. Yeah. So if there's zero, you know, if we have another Black Swan event, um, you know, he doesn't have to continue right, to pay. Right, right, right. Whereas he does well, which he has been doing the past couple of years post COVID, town generates uh, more revenue. We've generated um, uh, two and a half times the amount of revenue we did with the old contract on an annual basis because, you know, he's happy, win win situation yeah. because he's generating. Um, more revenue, giving a piece of it to the town. He gets to use the fields, and everybody is happy, which is the way it should be. That's Simmer terrific. Similarly, with the um, uh, the uh, Glen Manor House, the new concessionaire, uh, Rich Tlipsky, who who's um, the business development director for the town, that also sits on our committee, worked on that, and we gave um, some input uh, and advice into how to structure that. So there's yeah. a new. Um, uh, individuals that now manage that for the town right, and, right. and so that's the type so so using um, the facilities is one thing um, one of the uh, facilities that could fall into that is the cog shawl school right <laughs> i'm very Which familiar yes. the people who are Portsmouthites who've been here for a long time knew that it was a uh, Quindic Christian C Academy for a number right. of years. Be in going back before that, it was a public school right. in Portsmouth many, many uh, years ago, decades ago. Um, I, 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 I was just told by a resident, the prop I was saying Cogashaw, Cogashaw, and it's supposed to be Cogshaw because she said, I'm a re I'm 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 a an ancestor of the original. It's, it's, it's I've on, been here it, for well, Carl Cogshaw is on the Portsmouth uh, Pact. One, okay, one yeah. of the 1638 people, yeah. and and there's still people in uh, Portsmouth here that are, go back right. 17 generations away. All right, so, so we'll, we'll we'll take so, her word for it. We'll take her word. So it's a vacant <laughs> it's, so it's a vacant facility that has a lot of nice. You know, it has an auditorium which could be a gymnasium. So it could it could be. Classrooms, uh, it, everything. It, it yeah. could be a number of, you know, what I would call potentially mixed use, multi use. Um, it could be a community center. Um, it could be, you know, you could you could open it up to uh, vendors to maybe sell for either for holiday seasons or whatever, a flea market type of, of thing. You could yeah. have a learning center. A number of different things. It, it, sitting there vacant. Um, there's two baseball fields in the back, which are really nice. They're, they're and used, those are used, right? Used the outdoor little, space But used. they're used by the Little League. They, they right. pay a small amount to the town for the usage of that land. But our thinking is, um, you know, it, they could be revamped. Now, the challenge is going to be cost, time, uh, you know, everything from, I, I've learned a lot more about mold re remediation yeah. in the past few weeks looking at that. And uh, fire, that's what I heard fire the big codes issue. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and a number of, struct uh, structurally it's sound, but there needs to be some, you know, other uh, repairs that need to be made, the roof, for example. So it, it would be cost. And so what we're doing is looking at it from the standpoint of both, how could we raise enough money um, to, to do these repairs, to reopen it, uh, and also, could we generate revenue by, you know, offering it to leagues and committees or, you know, maybe if it was a YMC-like health, health center, residents would pay, you know, $50 a year, we could buy some equipment. And so we're looking at it from that standpoint. And as I said at a town council meeting uh, a few weeks ago, I said, the word economic is in our name. So whenever there's something that needs to be analyzed for an economic development standpoint, you know, we're the perfect type of committee to do that. Yeah. So building a business case uh, for a community center like the Cogshaw School 
um, is something that we'll take a look at. Um, it may not happen. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why, you know, it right. may or You're may not. You're not here making promises. No, it, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but if people do have an opinion on it and would like to see it or would not like to see it, you know, we have some people say maybe we, we just, you know, tear it down and turn it and sell it to a private developer for you know, condos or something, whatever. I, I'd like to just yeah. hear all kinds of. Yeah, there's no on shortage it. of opinions, no. is there? Oh no, not in <laughs> not in Portsmouth. It's it, it's one of the good things, as we know from our town council meeting, is people yeah. you know people do get up and speak. And, and, and by the way, you know, openness and transparency is 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 a good thing. It's a good way to solve problems because if you try to do it in behind closed doors and you anticipate, you think you know what people want or need. You're typically you know, going to be wrong, and maybe yeah. you know surprised in a negative way. Whereas if you open it up and you get all the opinions, I, when I was running companies, I always used to say, "Okay, we have all these people advocating that we you know do this new product or we acquire this company. I want to hear from all of you in the room who think it's the Not stupidest idea. idea you've ever heard, because I want to hear all the negatives, and then yeah. you know we'll make the." final decision and so I'm the so same glad we've got the same thing we have on your the skill set here that's yeah. amazing yeah. that's very cool mm -hmm. all right so Cogshaw what else what else is uh, well we, you know we have a um, we have some initiative uh, by local uh, campaign which we're still in the exploratory phases of determining um, how we might do that um, there was some money that came out of the COVID that the town got um, it was called the uh, American Rescue, Rescue Plan, Plan Act, yeah, yeah, yeah. and some of that money, um, the town council, you know, allocated because businesses uh, were impacted negatively, allocated that to the town to see if we could work on it. It, it. You know, and again, a lot of communities just, you know, gave money, but we feel, you know, it's so it's better to teach people how to fish than it is to give them fish. Is old saying. Yeah, yeah, so sure. it's better if we did something on their behalf. Um, to make this a better uh, community. Uh, and so one of the things we're exploring, again, it's in early phases, is maybe setting up a, a, a website specifically for businesses in, in uh, Portsmouth to promote their business and to you know, do things like specials and whatever. And you know, yeah. so it's a technology, since we have a couple of people on our tech on our committee that are, that are yourself that, included, that are it geeks. sounds like <laughs> I, can, I can I can manage it and ask the right questions. <laughs> I I may have the background way back, but That's um, funny, Joe. You know, we have we have people like Ted Peets, who's a computer scientist at the Naval yeah, Underwater, is be, and so what he's doing for the federal government, he's also helping to do for yeah. us. And I Rich, know he's Rich enthusiastic Tulisky. about yeah. broadband, right? Is yeah. that something yeah. you guys are considering no, that, that it, falls I'm, under the purview? I'm of... glad you bought, brought it up and yeah. you didn't have time to go through it all. But um, one of the things that we tackled a few years ago, which is still ongoing, is to see if we could come up with a better way to make universal broadband available to the uh, Portsmouth and to the island. And we're working with other communities uh, who have the same problem. Um, it, it, the pro one of the problems, a, a, as we know, is we have limited um, uh, choices in Portsmouth. Well, that, for, that is certainly you know, a for pain broadband point. And you know, the world is going uh, fiber optic to every house. Um, it's it you know it, it's gotten a little bit better over the years, but it's still you know if we do if we do an analysis you know relative to communities across the United States, we're probably you know, not in the top half of where we need to be in terms really? of broadband. Really? That's, that's interesting it, it, and it, it, I'd it, say surprising. Well, it, it, it is, um, you know, this history behind it and we could spend a lot of time, which we don't have. Uh, so we're looking for ways to encourage that um, either by you know, maybe encouraging new businesses or encouraging existing businesses to do more and so on and so forth. We think it's a business initiative and, it, and it's very complex and so we, we have people on the committee that are continuing to look at and they go to a lot of meetings uh, at the state house and yeah. and uh, on the island to you know what other communities like, like lobbying Newport. sort of it's it's like lobbying yeah. yeah it's looking for it's looking for you know funds it's looking for initiatives that might make it uh, mm. better here we don't have we haven't found you know what I refer to as a silver bullet yet the one thing that's going to fix it you know for for all but um, we're spending time on sure. it sure yeah. Sure. And the idea when you say universal broadband is that every house has great service and has this, or is it like I, we're bringing it to all our town buildings? What does that mean to you? Yeah, no, it's every house. Every house. Okay. Yeah, no, it's, okay. it's, 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 it's every house. And, you know, there's, there's 
techn technically there's a few ways you can do it. One is fi you know fiber to every home. Um, yeah. It's expensive uh, to, you know, somebody has to bear the expense, either a private entity or a government. Um, the federal government has major initiatives to try to roll out broadband nationwide, yeah. and there's billions of dollars flowing down. But usually they're given to um, communities of need first as, yeah. a, as a social benefit. And we, you know, we don't necessarily qualify for that. So we right. have to be a little bit more creative as a community because, um, you know, we're more yeah. more private so yeah get fiber to the house um, would probably be the ideal solution that would make sure that everybody has you know broadband forever yeah oh, that's so cool yeah. man mm -hmm. you and guys, it has to be cost effective you too, all obviously. are doing so many yeah, different there, things there are um so we've got a, you know, just a couple of minutes yeah, left so okay. is there anything else you want to highlight no i there? mean that's fine you know again we, we 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 have a page on the town website we're going to make that a little bit better put more content on there so you should check that out and um, if you know you have any other ideas or suggestions bring them to my attention so yeah, yeah. absolutely well let's just sort of end again with okay. the you know uh, thank you for being on this it's so wonderful mm -hmm. to have volunteers like people this is an yeah. entire volunteer that's committee, a re right? really good let's, point let's talk about that for no just it's a, a second, really good right? point and I've been remiss <laughs> at not you know thanking um, my members I'm the Again, the leader, um, it's the membership that makes it happen. They're uh, very good, dedicated people that put their time in uh, for free. Uh, you know, whether they're uh, a lawyer who has to take time away from a client or somebody who's retired who maybe is playing less golf, <laughs> they, <laughs> they are putting their time into this primarily, like I feel, because they want to do their part to make Portsmouth a better place. And, you yeah. know, town, and, and, and there are many committees, um, you know, Parks and Recreation, there's many committees in Portsmouth like ours, so we're not the only one who, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a treasure. I don't, I haven't investigated this, but I don't think there are towns that have the extent of the number of committees and the number of people as we have in Portsmouth. So yeah. whoever kind of started that many years ago deserves, deserves a lot of credit and I hope we you can continue to um, attract and re retain good people and the first part of that is if people feel on the committees that they're being listened to and they're making a difference even if it's a small difference like we did yeah. with the polo you know if we, if we don't do cog school so be it but as long as we're making a difference and people are listening to us then they're going to dedicate their time if they think they're just going to a meeting for a few hours a month and nothing is happening then right. obviously they're not going. and this is part of it so thank you for ha having oh, well, us I tell you here. it is it is such an honor to mm -hmm. meet with people like yourself that's this whole show is about yeah. highlighting right. the efforts of people just like yourself that mm -hmm. and it is a very special place our mm -hmm. town right. Right, it is. It is very magical, and it, and it, it's you're tapping into like this, this this element that I think sets us apart a little bit. We could bit, live, right? We could live anywhere, and we want to be here forever. Yeah. And you so. found us all the way from Cambridge, Mass. You and your no, wife. I, well, I wasn't live. I was born there, but we were actually I was living actually in Grafton, but, but right. Cambridge but, is where I was but born. But here yeah. you are. Mm -hmm. Here you yeah. are choosing Portsmouth. Por absolutely. And we are lucky for it. Thank right. you, Thank so, you much, so much, Joe. Great. I really appreciate thank it. And you you'll have time. to come back and update us on okay. everything. Wonderful. Please. Thank you. All right. Thank you. This has been Portsmouth this week with my guest Joe Forgione, the chair of the Portsmouth Economic Development Committee. We'll see you next time.